Okay, um, this little video is to show you the steampunk iPhone cases, which are a scratch build mold manufacture. Um, the eventual result can be something like this. This is kind of the unweathered version. Um, this is for your iPhone 4S. So that's the kind of unweathered one. What we also have, these are work in progress because they're not quite there, is the weathered one. I'm not sure if the, the light in here will pick it up, but we've got kind of, you can see here, we've got the rust and the uh, oxidization begin to happen uh, with the metal powders which are in the resin. Here we have a mould. Um, this is a uh, platinum silicon, a very high grade silicon, very expensive silicon. And this is uh, what we see here is the feed hole where the resin goes in. And we have risers on the other side, just where the resin and the air is pushed out. They also run through a vacuum a vacuum casting process that is any air is removed prior to um, the process happening. So we have a mould here. I shall remove this from the mould. We do it with one hand. So if we look into the mould we can see we can kind of see the detail there. So this silica is very good for picking up everything. Uh, if you make a mistake, if you scratch it, you'll see it in the silicon. So it's very important to try and um, be like a surgeon, really. So if what we get out of the mould initially is kind of this. And it doesn't look much until uh, we use several processes on it. And um, the first process, which takes about, about 20 minutes, I suppose, is um, it's a simple wobble in various grades. Uh, working down to the finest and um, once you've started to buff that up um, you, you're basically exposing the metal powders that are in it and I use um, uh, copper, brass, iron and uh, bronze powders in various configurations in the mould to highlight the different elements within the, within the tool. So as you can see in close up here, the colour is very poor and it's very warm in here, but you can kind of see the detail this picks up, and we can see the, the metal effect which you just couldn't achieve with a paint job. Um, this has real metal in it, so when it's polished, uh, this just looks like metal, an old metal which I love. Um, what I also like, some people prefer this uh, the simple unweathered version, which is purely um, just a polish up after the initial inside we have um, this point is where the riser goes in, uh, feed goes in, and this risers will be along here. So the, the, the case is cleaned up, uh, risers and feeds removed, polished up. That takes about, that takes about 10 or 15 minutes to get that nice and um, smooth and clean. And then the, uh, the polishing starts with the wire wall. And it's just a real fiddly job. Uh, so I suppose from coming out of the mould to um, finished product takes around 25 minutes per unit. I'm getting quicker. But um, uh, yeah, it takes about that long. You can sort of see here the, the different metals in there. You've got some copper, bronze, uh, brass and iron. And when we when we weather them with chemical, uh, and these are kind of beginning to happen, you can see the rusting happens. So this is better than any paint job because it's the real thing. Um, the copper, bronze, and brass will oxidise and tarnish with the chemicals. And these aren't dangerous chemicals. You know, you you'll find them at home in your pantry and in the kitchen. They are not harmful in any way. And um, and the metal, the iron, will rust. 
and um, once that's kind of dried and the chemicals are dried off, um, we can then polish it back with a bit more wire wool. This is one kind of, uh, where is it? One in early stages somewhere. Yeah, here. So if we look at this, this is kind of just uh, the first chemical uh, which brings out the rust and everything. This is prior to adding the second one, which will um, oxidize the uh, copper and brass and bronze and give that lovely blue-green uh, verdigris patina. Which, um, and what I like about them is that you can't control it. They're all individual, they grow, they rust, they, they, they weather it um, in their own way. So every each one is different. You can't make them identical, it's impossible. And uh, that's kind of the joy of it for me. Um, so you can see that, I mean, this is a cast in a, a, a very, very strong polyurethane resin uh, that mimics ABS. But you couldn't injection mold this. Um, because you can't put the metal powders in a, in the in the plastic pellets for injection molding, so I did consider the injection molding route to produce you know hundreds of thousands of them, but you wouldn't get this uh, you wouldn't get this finish, and if you wanted to get that finish with a paint job, that would take you know, each one would take a, too long really to kind of make any money, um, so I'm making a little bit of cash from this. Uh, but not a great deal, purely on the time and effort that it takes to create um, each one. But I think they're quite cute. They're very different. Um, they're a limited edition. Um, you know, I only do 50 of each metal powder configuration, and um, the tool itself is only good for around sort of. 25 before it breaks down anyway, so then you have to retool from the master. So, in reality, each one is individual because uh, you could never uh, get the same effect, the same finishes on two alike. It's impossible. But in terms of the metal powder configurations, i.e., putting iron around the outside, maybe copper here, brass here, etc., etc. That's limited to 50 uh, per run. So um, I haven't produced a lot of these, and at some point I will rebuild it differently. And, um, and I'm currently building one for the, the new iPhone 4S, which will, uh, these, um, will have further uh, perforations here along this side to allow for the extra button um, on that side. So that's work in progress. Also, also doing them for the um, the BlackBerry and the HTC. Um, I hope you like them. Um, I had a lot of fun making them, and uh, they're available on eBay. Just uh, search for Steampunk iPhone case, and uh, hope to see you soon. Bye.